what's the difference to you between, you see patients, between sort of rigorous um, psychoanalysis. I don't, I don't know if you consider what you, like talk therapy and psychoanalysis, are they neighbors, are they overlapping? They're, they're neighbors. Uh, psychoanalysis is, it's, um, they're relatively, it, it's not nearly done as much as the talk therapy, like the cognitive behavioral therapy I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, the, the psychoanalysis is, is a little more niche now, and partly because it's, it's not, data isn't, um, in terms of actual treatment of actual therapeutic effects, data not as, as supportive as for cognitive behavioral therapy. But it's still interesting as for insight. People, a lot of people still do it to gain insight into themselves. And in general, it's a good uh, sort of conversation starter. Those methods, you know, they're good for <laughs> getting things out. You know, we don't focus on dreams uh, typically these days in psychiatry, but they're great conversation starters. They're great ways to get things out if people have, uh, and and so we like to use those methods just to get the the ball rolling. Sometimes get people to open up a little bit, but the actual treatment uh, d tends not to involve these psychoanalytic approaches where you are really probing uh, the unconscious mind and its manifestation through through dreams. Um, uh, for example, as as the as the goal, that's not the goal. Modern talk therapy, we're really focusing on treatment, how to get people to feel better. See, I use that as a conversation opener, the Freudian thing, where I try to delve at a bar of the deep sexual desires in a person's subconscious, and I find that opens up possibilities very quickly. <laughs> no, um, I, it, what's I mean, this is a silly sounding question, but what's the difference between cognitive behavioral therapy? and conversation. So, because um, I personally, as a fan of conversations, as a fan of just, I like listening to podcasts um, versus like audiobook. I like both, but they're very different. And I like conversation. I like, um, it makes me personally very anxious. So I like to be the listener, uh, like, like a third wheel, like overhearing a conversation kind of thing. But it's a really powerful method for humans to explore each other's mind, just raw conversation. So do you think it can be more productive to be very systematic about it, or is conversation itself the art form of of helping each other, understanding each other and helping each other? There are forms of talk therapy that are essentially conversational, or they much more approach pure conversation. There's uh, there are there's a, a befriending therapy. There's interpersonal therapy. These are these are approaches that are purely talk therapy, but they're not as structured as cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy has is there are manuals, there are guidelines. You can almost go through it in a in a very cookbooky way. There's there's homework that you get done. So it's in its fullest form. It's very different from these more conversational uh, strategies. But what's interesting is sometimes people compare them, and so you'll see <laughs> almost like randomized controlled studies um, comparing cognitive behavioral therapy with interpersonal therapy, for example. And they both can work. And actually, in, in some studies, they look uh, comparable. Um, so there's, to your point, conversation and insights that come from conversation, if done well, if done artfully, can be uh, as powerful.